Welcome back and thank you very much for your time this morning as we mourn with the family of Sir John and also the new patriotic party who have lost the stalwart of their party. The business finder this morning says that entrepreneurship, innovation are the key to economic revival after COVID-19. President has challenged um, the presidential pitch season three winners yesterday as they were presented with their prizes. The president was there. Also, the um, Minister for Business Development, Dr. Brian Mawa, was there. ICU rallies more support for hospitality sector, not the intensive care unit that you know, but the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union, Solomon Kote and his folks. Uh, the Ghanaian Times presidential pitch program, three winners bag uh, 210,000 Ghana cities. Social distance defiance persists as guarantor system slows down processes on day two of the registration exercise for the compilation of a new register. COVID-19 Finance Ministry earmarks 80 million Ghana cities special allowance for frontline health workers. And Silviano of the Electoral Commission says we'll prosecute anyone who guarantees for more than 10 applicants. And the Daily Guide, gunfight in Asantiachim, North NPP. 80 million Ghana cities for health workers special allowance. And Robert Storm Church kill man. The big banner headline says NDC gurus turn EC lovers as 19,000 register on day one in Volta alone. The Daily Graphic, review punishment for not wearing nose masks. According to the Ghana Bar Association, they think it's on a high side and we will not be making anything out of it. It will not be also in, ensuring that people uh, are adhering to it. Third presidential uh, pitch, entrepreneur 26 wins 100,000. Uh, prize money. Fidelity Bank posts 322 million profit in 2019. The Electoral Commission's measures to curb the, prevent the spread of the virus. The BNFT this morning says Douglas Akogo wins President Shop Pitch walks away with 100,000 Ghana cities. Crude revenue drops 5% despite 15% increase in production for 2019 and 80 million Ghana cities set aside to pay 50% allowance for health workers. My guest this morning is the uh, Member of Parliament for the Tamale North constituency, the Honorable Alhaji Alhassan Suhini. Also joining him is Nana Kofi Damoapon. He's uh, a spokesperson for the Ministry of Energy and is a member of the MPP's communication team. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Johnny. Good morning to you. Okay. Uh, Nana, Sir John is gone. Um, Mr. McMenu is in intensive care and with Carlos Ahinkra, whom we saw at the primaries. What's on your mind this morning? Um, good morning. Good morning. Uh, to you, first of all. Good morning to your viewers as well. It's a sad day. It's a very sad day for the NPP fraternity, and I believe um, politics in Ghana general, generally. Uh, I, I am struggling to put together words mm. because this is a bit difficult. For, for all of us in a time like this. But um, what I can say presently mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. may God keep his soul mm -hmm. and may the family take heart. Biggest condolences to, to him and to his family. Mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily to him, but to the family and everybody that was involved. This is, this is a shocker, mm -hmm. an absolute shocker for all of us. Some fear this is getting into the inner perimeter, but we'll come to that. Let's talk, uh, Suhini, what's on your mind? Say, John is gone. Uh, well, um, Johnny, let me say good morning to our viewers, especially the good people of the Tamale North uh, constituency. Mm -hmm. I agree with uh, my colleague on the panel that um, it's a sad uh, announcement that uh, many will be waking up to this morning even though it happened last night. Uh, Sir John uh, has been a very interesting political character in our politics for some time now, um, especially for those of us who worked in the media. Um, it was always exciting to uh, have Sir John mm -hmm. on, on your show mm -hmm. uh, because of the controversies that he will raise that will uh, uh, drive listenership. And he was a person that one could easily call a friend mm -hmm. after interacting with him a couple of times. Uh, he was that nice. Uh, didn't look his age at all mm -hmm. and didn't even act it. And I think um, politics in Ghana is going 
to uh, miss his contribution greatly. And I am sad that mm. um, he had to go uh, as a result of uh, the deadly COVID-19. Mm. I mean, in Alilahi wa in Um every uh, person is going to taste death. I mean, we are all going to die. And I, I, I sometimes it is the how, the when, uh, and, and, and the cause, mm. you know. And I am saddened that uh, even as we continue to record these kind of, kinds of deaths, mm -hmm. high-profile deaths as a result of COVID, our attitude, um, you know, generally, mm. um, from the top to the bottom, uh, doesn't seem to uh, paint a picture of a very dire situation. And that worries me. That worries me, Johnny. Hmm. It does. Now, now th this is getting into the inner perimeter. If you look at the caliber of persons who now are contracting it, uh, KK Sam is gone, Sir John is gone. Um, we're told that Sir John's sister and the mother, we don't know if they died out of COVID, but the names keep popping up. Those who are getting into intensive care, we still don't have any update on the health, the education minister, Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe, and the MP for CRE, and also the uh, minister for regional reorganization and development, Mr. Dan Botry. We don't have updates on them, but it does appear that it's getting into the inner perimeter, closer, if you will, to the president, cabinet ministers, and all of that. That should be a great concern to, to us, and perhaps should let us wake up and know that there's something that we're not doing right, correct? Um, I, I do not think that it's so much about something that we're not doing right as opposed to the wake-up call that they should give us, that COVID-19 is no respect of persons. Mm -hmm. Um, if it is about money or the use of political power to gain our resources to ensure that we are able to um, heal some of these persons. Of course, uh, all the necessary resources of the state would have been made available to them. So what we should all understand is that um, it's real, it's out there, and it is no respect of persons. And I, I don't think that I can repeat that enough. Mm -hmm. COVID-19 is real. It is no respect of persons. So let us all begin to take seriously mm -hmm. the protocols that are in place. It's, it's sad that for the last um, couple of days, we've engaged in some commentary mm -hmm. that uh, has taken away attention from the discussions that we should have been having mm -hmm. on COVID-19 <coughs> and enforcing the protocols, particularly now that we have to undertake you know, some civic duties in mm -hmm. registering for a voter's register, among others. Mm -hmm. And I'll take this opportunity to appeal to everybody to seriously consider their own safety because mm -hmm. it works in such a way that if I take all the precautions that I have to take for myself, mm -hmm. and you do so, mm -hmm. and he does so, we're all protected. But if I get reckless, mm -hmm. and you also get reckless, that is where the issues come. So this morning, on the back of all of this, uh, no Krachi, first of all, we, we, we are deeply saddened by this, but let every Ghanaian mm -hmm. use this as a wake-up call for himself. And please, 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 make sure that you wear your nose mask, wash your hands, mm -hmm. use hand sanitizers, and observe <coughs> all the safety protocols that you have to observe. No expenditure uh, is greater than your, than, than your life. So the, the videos that we had from the primaries, and some say this, is fallout from the primaries. We saw, for example, Honorable Carlos Ahinkra, after he won his uh, primaries, we saw jubilation, people hugging and all of that, mm -hmm. even though some big party persons have said that they have not seen it and they would have to investigate. But the videos are there. Mm -hmm. Now the concern is mm -hmm. we have put in uh, this uh, uh, contact tracing, enhanced contact tracing and all of that. It will be very, very tough now for us in, the resources that you're talking about that we don't have, maybe what we will have to go and look for now, to go and look for these people. Look at it, it's, it's worrying, is it not? Um, I'm looking at the video. This is a video I'm seeing for the first time. Mm. Um, it, it just generally speaks to the Ghanaian society and what we have existing. 
Um, it's sad that, you know, some commentary has brought us to this point, mm -hmm. but government has done its best to put in place all the necessary protocols, <coughs> and we have used all available channels to ensure that this is drummed in and mm -hmm. drummed into the very end. But again, I would rather not even look at all of these things, but look at it generally. That Listen, as a Ghanaian, mm -hmm. what we all need to understand is that COVID-19 is not a respect of persons. Yeah. It doesn't care your name, your wealth, mm -hmm. or anything. If it gets there and it gets there, and uh, it affects you, the, the, the invariable um, occurrences may, may be the case. Mm. So I would want to once again plead with everybody. I do not think that it does anybody any good mm -hmm. if we are going to just say that because of um, NPP primaries mm. alone, mm. because there's been several others, several during the lockdown in particular, mm -hmm. I, you know, had a pass and I happened to be commuting. And mm. I saw quite a lot of things that was very worrisome. The, the sharing of the food that people were gathering. It was very, that. very worrisome. To some people, it was almost as though COVID-19 was non-existent. Just like that's like what we're seeing now, the restrictions. There were, and then when the lockdown was imposed, when mm. movements on restrictions were brought about, we were told by some that uh, it is an attempt to rig an election. Mm. That is why mm. uh, uh, these restrictions were being imposed on persons, creating the impression as though the disease is not as serious as government was trying to make it look. There are several other examples that we can cite mm. as to where, why we are where we are today. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter. This is not the time to engage in such, you know, net speaking. What, what do we do? And petty you're, politics. You're, you have thrown a, the advice to the public, but what is the responsibility of the state towards the public? The president has always been very concrete that all the decisions that they are making mm -hmm. is based on the science and the data. And as the data comes before them, they continue to look at it and make the changes that we need to be, enable us as a country to respond mm -hmm. to the threats that we face. So I believe that as all of this is coming in, there's a team, there's a COVID-19 national management team that mm -hmm. is taking care of it. They're regional based uh, management teams as well. Mm -hmm. They'll look at the data and I believe that they would... Um, make the best decisions for the country as a result of the data. Would you recommend that is the lockdown? Them. Um, I believe that I do not have enough information mm. to be able to suggest anything. Mm. I have absolute confidence in the team that is managing this. Mm. They have always made sure that they make the decisions that they are making based on, as they have said, the science and the data. Mm. So I'd want to see the reactions and the decisions that they will make as a result of all the information that is going before them at this particular point in time. Okay. There are so, some very tough decisions right. that they have to make, but mm. I'm, I have absolute confidence in them that they'll make it. What, However... Which, which tough decisions are these? I, like I said, it's, it's never easy to make decisions at a certain level, knowing mm. that it involves human life. That's what, I, that's what, uh, that's what I'm generally referring to. Mm. But facts are facts, facts are sacred. They have shown mm. that they have what it takes to make the necessary decisions for us as a country. But I don't think it is enough mm -hmm. to use every opportunity that we get mm -hmm. to drum in the point that people need to pay extra attention mm -hmm. to their own safety and their own security. And I would want us to repeat this at every point that we get. It's essential. Okay. So, Hini, what's on your mind? Um, we've seen the crowds, uh, the fallouts. And I'm scared, actually. I am very, very scared, actually. Johnny, let me... Um, at this point, extend my deepest, deepest, deepest condolences mm -hmm. to the family of uh, Sir John. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a very long, difficult period for that family, considering the fact that we are hearing that um, the mother mm -hmm. and the sister mm -hmm. uh, are yet to be buried right. also. Uh, we do not know if they, their lives were also claimed by COVID, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, that should tell you the agony that the family is going through at this moment. So once again, I wish to convey my deepest, deepest uh, condolences uh, to the family. But Johnny, in this COVID-19 uh, fight mm -hmm. that Ghana has been engaged in, mm -hmm. for me, you can toss it however you want. Clearly, we have not had leadership how do you mean we haven't been given any you know leadership in this fight how, i agree how do you mean i agree that individual responsibility is important mm. but i also know 
that they say when the fish is getting rotten, it starts from the head. And no matter how responsible the individual is, mm -hmm. if the state that should provide leadership, the president and his government that should provide leadership, fails in their duty to do so, individual responsibility will not be enough. And that is the result of what we are having. <coughs> For example, Tony, it is not the individual's decision mm -hmm. to go out <clears throat> and register. It is not the individual who made the decision that we must all gather at one place and carry out this needless registration exercise. That adds almost nothing to the existing register. Despite all the assurances that we were made about a new, improved, additional features, facial recognitions and mm -hmm. others, we are seeing none of that. The QR code is there. Needless, John. Needless registration. It is not the individuals who got together and decided. It was leadership. The NPP Congress that Sir John, unfortunately, played an active part in was not the decision of the individual members of the New Patriotic Party, who may have been very responsible in wearing their nose marks and also observing the protocols. It was the decision of their leadership, and by extension, because they are in government, the leadership of this country, to get them together to do that Congress. So clearly, it is leadership that moved us from the hashtag stay home and save lives to get out mm -hmm. and register. It is leadership. The law prescribes that it must be done. For example, if the elections don't happen on December 7, what happens? We did not need to have a registration exercise before they register. And look. Go and read all the exposés of Imani Ghana on this. I mean, we have gone beyond that debate. But I just want us to know that it is leadership that brought us to where we are. Mm -hmm. Johnny, you recall that on this same set, I think on my last appearance, mm -hmm. I was with Dr. Okoboy, right. our Honorable Deputy Minister for Health. Mm -hmm. And I made the point that I consider it reckless that government posturing and commentary at this point suggests that it is time for us to begin to live with the disease, to learn how to live with the disease. Because I thought it was too soon to communicate that message to the people. When you want them to see it as, you know, serious as it is, because it is an evolving virus. Mm -hmm. People still are yet to establish its complete nature. In fact, for a very long time, we were told it was not airborne. Today, there is some you know, evidence to the fact that it can hang in the air for some time. It keeps changing. It keeps changing. Okay. So if you do not know its nature, mm -hmm. you don't make people begin to think that and I heard some people suggest so in government that it is like malaria, it is like HIV, we have to live with it, people will die, people will contract it, and so we have to live with it. Once you had leadership sending out those messages, you, 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 you contributed to the poor, you know, general, individual attitude. But, but that message was, was not put out there uh, just like that. It was put out there with a caveat. You go out, you wear your mask, and which is why we have the law to say, if you don't put on your mask, we will deal with you. You will either be prosecuted or fined. Uh, you must wash your hands. No mask, no entry. Wash your hands with soap and under running water. So you are told to go out there, but you're also told to be responsible and assist the state to protect you. And, and, and all others. That, that that's is why we that's have leadership, isn't it? That's why we have different types of communication. And we have what we call noise in communication. Mm. Communication is not just a verbal. 
you also have the nonverbal. And what we call knowing sometimes is when there is an inconsistency between the verbal and the nonverbal. Mm. It makes it difficult for the intended recipient of the message to act appropriately. Last one. <clears throat> that, that, that is what we have had with leadership. Where do we like go? they say, mm. they give that the trafficator shows left, mm. but you see them turning right. Where do we go? And from so here? it leaves people confused. I'm saying that yes, at this point, leadership has failed us. Mm. But as individuals, we must understand that the kind of direction mm -hmm. that we were expecting from leadership hasn't come from day one. All the actions of leadership has either been too late or confusing, thoughtless. Mm. And so it is time for us to begin to perhaps not take some of their actions and proclam uh, proclamations seriously. Let us do what we know, mm. as at now, can save our lives. Okay, thank you. Let yeah. us ensure mm. that we do what we know can save our lives. Mm. If you have to stay home, please do. If you don't have anything to do outside, please do. At the risk of losing your uh, franchise to exercise same. That is where perhaps I have repeatedly said, Johnny, mm. that this registration exercise, which is needless, if anybody goes through it, and I urge people to go through it, they are going to experience frustrations. They are going to, it is going to even get risky mm. because of this COVID. But because it is a civic responsibility, I urge Ghanaians to rise up and defy the risk involved, mm. the frustrations that may be involved, mm. whilst taking individual responsibility. But they must not forget to punish those who are putting them through this. Okay. They now, mustn't. No, no. The Electoral Commission earlier at the, uh, what do you call it, the piloting told us that it would take maximum, if, if push comes to shove and it gets worse, 15 minutes to be able to do this. Now, we're reading that sometimes it takes up to 20 minutes, which means that if you're registering, uh, you know, uh, by the day, a center can register 20, you know, out of uh, uh, some 12 or so hours, will not get you not more than 120, 150 people. And that in itself is a recipe for disaster. Do you think that the Electoral Commission has been, has been fair and diligent enough in in doing the exercise that they promised that they would do, given the crowds that we are seeing out there, the responsibility that Sulin talks about, and the leadership? Johnny, I would answer your question, but I am saddened this morning Why? by the kind of commentary that I've heard right here on your show. Mm. Did I hear Sulin urging the Ghanaian public to defy leadership? Mm. Did I hear that? I said they should rise up and punish. It is time to perhaps disobey what leadership and do what they know. Did I hear you no, say no, no. that? He, he, no, no. Uh, what I said, and he, I'll explain to you. I'm saying I'm that not perhaps, for perhaps, no, I'm, perhaps, I'm to, no, perhaps it is time, it, hmm. it is time for us to stop expecting leadership hmm. to take hmm. the lead hmm. in this fight. It is time for us to do what we know hmm. can prevent and protect us from COVID. Instead of waiting upon leadership to take lead and provide leadership because mm -hmm. they have been a mess so far. Okay. That's the Listen, point. I've made. I heard him and I heard in him. The, in the oh. part that I use defiance, mm -hmm. I said the people must rise up, okay. defy the risk involved in registration mm -hmm. and the frustration that may be involved mm -hmm. in that registration, get registered and punish those who are putting them through it. Okay. That's when I use defiance. Okay. See, now, listen, I heard him and I heard him clearly. If he has had the opportunity and he wants to no. depart from no. that initial... No, you okay. didn't. I didn't say that. Don't suggest that I said that and please, proceed. Please, please, I didn't say that. Please. Okay. please. Do not suggest please. that I did. Please. I didn't. Okay. Okay. If right. you want to build your premise on a false statement, go ahead. But don't suggest that I said so. I didn't. Anana? Can I proceed? Yes, pro proceed. I was sitting right here, and I believe that viewers also heard it. Okay, so go ahead. He, and, he, he and, says and he didn't say that. I'm coming. If, if, if he wants to depart from that, that's okay. At least everybody out there who... It is not okay to oh, suggest that I did that. So no, it, so Johnny, he's not being fair so, to so me. It is not okay. I didn't say it. No. So he cannot say that if I want to depart okay. from it. I didn't say it. Okay. How, how am I departing from it? He must... If he wants to 
to start so on a first promise. I'm capable promise. of doing worse. Do that. Things. No, so I'm Nana, capable Nana, of doing worse. Nana, so allow me to make Nana, a point. You're attributing something to I him. Didn't and say he says he didn't say that. Unless, so, listen, unless so, so you make progress. I'm coming. I'm going to make progress. But I think it's important mm. that we let the people of Ghana understand. Unfortunately, we can't play yeah, back. Unfortunately, we can't play back. But perhaps, 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 you may want to go back and give viewers mm. that benefit of the doubt to pay attention to the construction of his words in the earlier statement. Okay. If the meaning that was given is not what he intended, that's okay. Mm. But I didn't say that. Don't say I intended. No, no. Listen, so, so you allow, uh, allow him. No, uh, allow him to I'm make... not going to, him to allow him to put words in my mouth no, and if, then proceed if, on if, that. Not, if false if, words. If, if, you not, if you do not want me to make my False point, words in my mouth. Nana, unfortunately, Nana, make your unfortunately point. he does not own Nana, this program. So if I may proceed. Nana, make Now, you see... It's critical and it's shameful to be doing politics at this point in time. It's shameful. Mm. People should go and register and punish those who are filled in leadership to whose advantage? Your political party's what advantage. What is the essence of their education? Program? Now, here's my point. Here's my point. Yes, it is true that leadership has failed, but guess what? Thank you. Leadership at a certain level. And what level am I talking about? When you have the general secretary of the NDC coming out to say that the imposition of restrictions and a lockdown is a rigging mechanism, how do you expect those who hold his word as the law mm -hmm. to take issues regarding social distancing and protocol seriously? Till today, I have not heard a single member of the NDC chastise Asid Nketiah for what he said. How, how is that Asid Nketiah and NDC's problem when you um, go to the uh, registration center and you see only one policeman with a chaotic situation. I'm making. I'm making. Doesn't assign I'm, building point, point, I'm building a point. I'm building a point, and so you get there. Mm. In any given general election in this country, you'd realize that the two major political parties have over forty percent. That's right. Now, those who are registering, invariably, there are some of them who are NDC people mm -hmm. who take the words of their general secretary very seriously. They are more concerned about rigging of an election than social protocols because their general secretary has made it clear that the imposition of restrictions is nothing. We shouldn't have imposed restrictions and gone into a lockdown because it's not that serious. That's the sort of leadership that failed. If that is what you want to talk about, because invariably you have a group of people, almost about, let's say, about 40% of the country, that invariably may want to believe the words of Asiyah Dinketia and proceed. And I've told you that this is a collective responsibility. You're, you're where, suggesting that all NDC members would listen I'm to I'm not you saying listen. that. I'm saying that if he says leadership has failed, mm -hmm. I agree with him. But he should rather put the blame squarely, and so they should be punished for the sort of decisions and commentary that they have made during this period of COVID-19. Okay. So leadership clearly, of the part of government has not failed. No, clearly, listen. Mm -hmm. What government has done, any objective observer that mm -hmm. wants to look at the issues will understand that government has acted and acted prudently. Mm -hmm. Prudently. Listen, around the world, Prince Charles, mm -hmm. is it Prince, I forget, is it Prince yeah. William or Prince Charles? One of them had it. Yeah, it's Prince Charles. A couple of very high-profile individuals Boris around Johnson the world well. have all had it. So in Ghana, if these difficulties are coming up, it is not a failure of leadership that has resulted in that. Let us not seek to gain political advantage in, out of everything. In the matter of Boris Johnson, for example, he went around saying COVID doesn't exist. He went shaking hands with people. He actually eased restrictions and the lockdown. Only for him to get into ICU, returned, and he had to re rescind this decision. So, so... These are issues that are global. Why then do you want to find a way to disingenuously give credit to your political party? I think it's shameful to be engaging in politics at this point in time, seeking benefit for your political party. Because the people of Ghana look up to you, the elected government. So if the people of Ghana look up to us, the elected government, and we are given directives... Let's all go together. What would have happened if I said Nketiah came out to say that, listen, um, as the NDC, as a political party, we support what government is doing. Mm -hmm. Everybody should stay at home. Rather than to take the opposite part and say that it is part of a Reagan machinery. In the last week, we've been engaged in some commentary. Mm -hmm. So in, in the run-up to this uh, registration exercise, instead of us as a country to come together and enforce the importance of the restrictions and the social distancing protocols. We all know the commentary that we've been engaged in. Mm. I am not surprised that some people seem to have forgotten that COVID-19 is real and they must follow those protocols at the registration centers because mm. if you listen to the commentary even this morning, some political parties are rather interested in some, you know, the rehashing of ethnic sentiments. Mm. 
Mr. KT Hamburg shouldn't have spoken what he said. And I'm not to say that it is politics. If he spoke and it's factually wrong, then that's it. And for Kojo to say he misspoke, Pius to say he's the deputy minister who is Mr. KT Hamburg, they must be listened to. No. He, sh he shouldn't have spoken in the first place on that score. First of all, I am not going to hold brief for Mr. KT Hamburg. Mm. Mr. KT Amon has on his own issued several statements, and I read the statement from him yesterday, in which he emphasized those things, and those points are clear. That's the first thing. Mm. Secondly, those that want to attribute the statement and sentiments, mm. which they claim, because Mr. KT Amon says that's not true, mm -hmm. but the claims that they are making, those that are very eagerly attempting to, you know, uh, draw government into this, mm. the clarification is clear. Government has official communication uh, channels. And so if you want to take a position of government, look at what government has said. Mm. Why is it that official communication channels of government have communicated certain positions and those are being ignored? Okay. And rather, you want us to... For, and you see, if you look at the context within which all of this is happening, you mm. can understand. And that's why I'm saying that it's shameful that some individuals want to engage in all of this for political benefit. Now, I'll explain to you the context. In the lead up to this entire registration exercise, mm. The NDC held a position that it will not come on. It's not possible. They were going to deploy everything in their arsenal to ensure that it will not come but, on. And I'm sure but, but Jamal was here yesterday. He says if you're going to court <laughs> with the matter to say that the register must not come on, you can't go public. The affairs, when you read the same one thing, you can't see another. Well, you see, that's, that's, a, that's an even... Sh I'll get to that <laughs> point, but allow me. I'm surprised that he actually had the boldness to say that on national TV. Mm. But let's put that aside and come back to it. So within that context... When it came that the decision had been made, the voters' register was going to go on, mm. how were they going to go back and tell their, their supporters that we had failed and explain to them and then ask their supporters to change round, mm. turn around and then go and register? It was a difficulty for them. Mm. All of a sudden, there was this gifted chance of a video from KT Hammond, mm. which Mr. KT Hammond, it needs to be put on record, has said that he, those words that are being attributed to him are not his words, first of all. Mm -hmm. And secondly, that is not what he intended. And he has, he makes us all understand that he has learned the uh, complaint with the National Media Commission. And that what he said was not factual. I, first of all, mm. I would not have said the things that he said in any case. Personally, I wouldn't have gone down that route. The man said he was not factual. But so the, let's, man let's has also, the man has also said he's not factual. Mm. Now, is, is it surprising that in this difficulty that the NDC had created for themselves, knowing very well that they had gone to the highest extent, giving assurances it would not happen. Mm. All of a sudden, they have something to hold on to. And so they've latched on to it and have gone ahead to make a big deal out of but it. But they're telling the people to go register. Regardless. Hold on. Hold on. I'm saying mm. that they are using this to fuel ethnic sentiments and say that, oh, let's go and recapture power. They are against the Voltarians, among others. They have conveniently mm. taken themselves out of that difficulty they imposed upon themselves of going to assure that people that, first of all, well, even if there's a new register, it doesn't mean we have lost the elections. Mm. Because the impression they created at the beginning was, if you allow a new register, mm. it is part of a rigging mechanism by this government. Okay, thank you. Now, now answer I, my I, question I, on I the electoral to, commission I, I, so I, I, I can share yes, the same I want, with him. I want to come back to this thing mm. of, of uh, Mr. Baba Jamal. So, essentially, what he said is that it was confidence trickery. They came out there as confident as possible to, you know, give all the confidence that they could give when they didn't have any basis. He says that, look, if you are filed a writ in court to suggest that you are against the process, you will not see it happen. You can't come public and be saying another thing. You would have defeated yourself already by that writ that you are filed in court. So the people of Ghana now know the mm. reasons why they came out to give the sort of confidence that they had. If you go to court, you either win or lose. So why didn't you then come and let the people of Ghana know in all honesty that, mm. well, we've presented our case. This is what we think it should be, but we can win or lose. Mm. Why didn't they do that? Okay. Talk now, to the Electoral Commission issue see, quickly and let's see if have a bite. No, on no, the, you, on you the background, you can't have all the time. On the background, you can't have all the time. I'm sorry. On the background of all of this. I'm sorry, you can't have all the time. I'm addressing the Electoral Commission issue now. On the background of all of this, is there any surprise, therefore, that people are not taking the COVID protocol seriously? Okay. Because I'm the, the electoral commission has been responsible enough. You see, the difficulty that the electoral com I, I, I understand the difficulty the electoral commission finds itself in. Because no matter the measures that you put in place, it is up to the individuals who are there 
to also observe those protocols. Remember mm -hmm. that we have already had this issue of security deployment mm -hmm. and how, and again, the commentary from the opposition mm -hmm. that they are going to use security forces to intimidate people among others. Mm -hmm. So now you have to give minimal security presence to ensure that people are safe enough and they feel safe enough and free enough to go out and register. Is that the excuse? I'm not saying it's an excuse. This is my, my, my personal position, okay. perhaps. This is my personal position because okay. you see. Are you guessing? It's a guess, yes. Like Katie Ambon. I yes, don't, I don't, we don't take guesses. But I'm yet. saying that the difficulty that we have is that where they have created this landmine where, oh, we are going to use the security to uh, uh, intimidate people. Mm -hmm. We are going to come out and intimidate people in certain. Now, we have minimal deployment and the people are not paying attention are to the Are you saying that the, the opposition is more powerful than the government? I'm not power? saying. I'm not suggesting anything. Okay. I'm just using an analogy that they have created okay. to ha let people understand the sort of problems that they create in the society. Okay. And this is my personal opinion. Okay. That when you continue to do this, if the government should deploy people right now, soldiers, the military right now, to ensure that people are keeping to the COVID protocols, what you find them saying is, ah, we said it. Ah, we said it. They are using the military to, 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 to intimidate people. We told you. What are the military men doing so here? So you are but scared perhaps, to do your duty. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that government is scared. I'm mm. relating this solely to the politics. So okay. I would, I'll be very happy if you stay away from that. Okay. I'm saying that if that should be done in an effort to protect lives mm. of Ghanaian people, mm. they are going to come and for the sake of politics, tell all of us that. Oh, we told you. So you allow the opposition to dictate the pace. That's what I want I don't to... understand why you keep going back to that. I, I'm going because... back to that because, see, the government, and I, I, my father used to tell me a very important quote. He says, a good leader will take the people where they want to go. A great leader will take the people where they ought to go. Good. Now, at this point, the people ought to be protected. Is it also damn, possible? Damn what the opposition says. Is it also possible that I'm preparing the minds of the people that perhaps... It could happen, and if it does happen, they should not regard what so the NDC says. So prove them wrong. Send no, the people saying, out. Let, saying, the, let the police and the military be disciplined and professional. I'm and saying let this to address your concern, that you are saying that I am saying that the opposition is more powerful. I'm telling that, you that. That's the inference you're giving No, me. that's not the inference mm. I'm giving, and that's what I want to correct. Okay. Is it also possible that I'm preparing the minds of the people, that if that should happen, they should look at it at COVID-19 protection measures, as opposed to what the opposition is likely to then come and tell them. you shouldn't have had any policeman at any registration center. If you're, that, Under your normal circumstances, since 1992, mm -hmm. do we have policemen at these registration centers just to keep the orders? And has it been the normal practice that you see just about one or two of them at every registration Center, that mm. is the case. Mm. In these times, are we in normal times? No. Mm. So, is it likely that looking at what is happening, there could be a deployment of extra men to ensure that people stick to the protocols? Yes. Remember, I've always underlined that the president has stated clearly mm -hmm. that he makes his decisions based on the science and the data. Thank you. You have had enough time. So, when I come to you, forgive me, let uh, Etanam take um, the, some of the messages that you've received this morning. Yeah, a lot of messages. And then you will have your, your bite at uh, this whole security thing. You gazumping government and creating a certain impression in the minds of the people and whether uh, you, are, you are enemies or not. Etanam. Right. Good morning, TV3. Sad uh, day for the MPP and the nation as a whole. Our condolences to the family, Abdul Aziz Nindu, Katuchi, and Tema. Johnny, my deepest condolences to the family of Sir John. May he so rest in peace. As Ghanaians, we need to take very good care of ourselves. We should adhere to the protocols or the measures put in place by way of COVID-19 safety measures. God bless our homeland, Ghana. Eddie from DRC. Good morning, uh, TV3. Johnny, we were made to believe by the EC that facial recognition will be part of this registration process, but unfortunately, no bad data or facial recognition is being captured on the ongoing registration process. Is there any reason why this flashy feature is not part of this exercise? Say, Gutfly, send that from Kukwin to me. Good morning, Johnny. Please would like to ask why the EC is not adding the supposed facial recognition that they insisted hence a new voter registration exercise. Samsa at Sankari. My heartfelt condolences to Sir John's family. May his soul rest in peace. Felix Akanai Wine, uh, send that from Boga. Nyoja Bright in Sunyani. There's danger looming post COVID, uh, post EC voter registration exercise. The disregard for social distance is appalling. We are pretending to be fighting COVID 19 until a big man dies because someone needs a new voter's register. Good morning, Johnny and his team. In fact, we don't need a rocket scientist to tell us that the government has lost the fight 
against COVID-19 long ago. They are only desperate how to hang on to power. From Raymond Agotime Petwe. Uh, the MPP and President Kufado should be held responsible for the needless death of Ghanaians through COVID-19. Rest in peace, Sir John. From Komla Adafia in Bawi. Good, uh, good job done to the entire team. Halid Prince Mukadi Bwakmoni. Send that from Tamale. Good morning. Good morning, my brothers over there. I hope you're doing well by grace of God, Sir John. May your gentle soul rest in perfect peace. From Seram inside Voter Region. A.U. Farouk Tamale North. Good morning. Uh, it's sad people are not abiding by the safety protocols at the polling centers. All this brouhaha is the fault of the EC who insisted for new voter register. Hashtag kick Nana out. Good morning, Johnny. The demise of Sir John should be a wake-up call for the EC and government to immediately call off the registration exercise. The world won't come to an end if we don't pass through this pandemic to register just to vote. We live to vote, but we don't vote to live. Ras Isando in Takradi. Good morning, Johnny, and your team. I think government is doing its best to create the awareness of this COVID-19. However, it's our individual responsibility to ensure that we keep safe at the registration centers. Richie Adenta. Good morning, Johnny. The Electoral Commission and the NCC should intensify the education on the registration of the new voter card. Most Ghanaians don't know that centers will be extended uh, uh, to their polling station. That's why there's an overcrowding at cluster centers. Agbo Nelson, Kobla in Akachi. Let me take the last two. Those who are dying as a result of COVID-19 should put the blame squarely on the doorsteps of the president and the government. So what informed the president's decision to ease restrictions when uh, the COVID-19 cases were still skyrocketing in the country? Kofi said, let me take the very last one. Good morning, host. The video that you showed on your screen concerning the crowd at the registration center is just a reflection of uh, what goes on in our homes, workplaces, and public places. No one obeys any rules. Elvis sent that from Tim. A lot of messages, but we have to end here. I should do a last yeah, one or two. Uh, okay, that's fine. So Hi, Johnny. Have, good morning to really you and clock, to your panelists. Government on the public. <laughs> decision to open up the number of gathering uh, from 25 to 100 as uh, really worsened matters because people go about their normal duties as if nothing is happening. Come to my area, Kole, uh, Gono, and Choco. People are still holding funeral with no social distancing protocols being observed. Prince from K. KG, KG. KG. Collegono, that's Collegono. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm. Good morning. The number of security personnel deployment at registration centers ought to uh, quite more to vehemently enforce the social distancing protocol. And also registrants with no excuse must seriously consider self-safety to curtail the spread. Gabi from Achim Begro, may the family of the late Sir John be consoled. Thank Good you morning. Okay. very much. So, uh, so you need to take your bite on this one. Are you gazumping government into... Um, if you like, or pitching government against the public <laughs> in the performance of their duties to protect the people. That's what Nana seems to suggest. Is that what the opposition is doing? I wonder how the criticism of me turning the discussion into a political discussion reflects mm -hmm. on the commentary that followed that accusation from my brother, how it reflects on him. Mm -hmm. I just wonder, but I'll leave that to the general public. I will just want to repeat for emphasis that mm -hmm. people must stop expecting direction mm -hmm. from leadership because they are clueless and worse, they are dishonest. And that's where the problem is. And they must, at Don't, every point in time, mm -hmm. take precautions you don't trust your as government. to how to protect they must stop taking leadership i mean direction they must I mean, stop expecting I mean, direction you see from what leadership. i'm speaking about no, 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 allow him it is a step you, allow me you to allowed him to interfere allow. severely and i think that i need to make a point no, no. which is critical no, no. I, that no, no. the initial no, no. statement no, no. the initial no, no. I, johnny you're no, not being fair to me johnny no. you're, you're honestly not being no. fair to me no, 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 no. don't don't say i'm not being fair you are not because you allowed him to interfere in my session you kept inviting him and i told him i didn't invite him but he has invited me so he has not he said that the initial commentary that i don't have a lot of time. I 
I'll give you. I'm giving you a I, lot of time. I agree with you, but so, if he invites so me and to calls my person time. to question, let, then I'm also allowed. He is, just asked me a question. That what? So let, if I may answer that let question, let him take the little time that is left. Okay, now this is the point. Which question did I ask? Okay, now this is the point. No, the intention is just to show that he can hack off, even when it is needless. It's not the intention. Even when it is needless. It's not the intention. No, no, you are not being fair to this person. He has just confirmed my initial suspicion. I have given you more than enough time. You clearly don't want me to talk, so that's okay. Allow him. So, so the last so, time you started, you so, started at 37, you spoke for up to 49. The exact thing he denied so, is what he's confirming. So, so, the so point, allow him to the make point his point. Is, yeah. But he denied we, something that he's confirming. We, we, we should not expect that. leadership because they have nothing okay. to offer us. You don't, West, trust, you don't trust your government. No, no. I mean, there, there have been so many instances that, and I've given you some of them, okay. that no matter how responsible we are as individuals, the actions of leadership does not seem to uh, want to protect us, they are putting politics over lives. Are you gazumping the government Clearly. and hitching them against Clearly. the public? Now he talks about demonstrations and that we demonstrated. Johnny, yes, yeah, we did. Speak of demonstration. Oh, you said that we threatened that we will not obey the registration exercise and all of that, Baba Jamal, whatever she yes. said. You said so. And I said that, look, those Johnny. were not demonstrations, so those were things no. that were and now said. You are yes, but words. we did allow demonstrations. Him, well, I'm saying that we did demonstrations. <laughs> he spoke about so Asedun Ketia, spoke, spoke, well, spoke about Baba Jamal, spoke about some key members of the party. It depends on what you call a saying, demonstration. Saying Our opposition, that. every action we took mm. in opposing the compilation of a new register was a demonstration. Mm. Whether we went to court or we hit the streets or we spoke to the media amounted to our demonstration of our you know, opposition to the compilation of a register. Are you hitching the so we are saying, against the government? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that our government has failed to provide leadership. We shouldn't fail ourselves as but, individuals. But you're asking them to defy what the government says hmm. and, I'm saying and that, protect themselves. I'm saying that they should not expect direction. Okay. How's that different? They shouldn't expect, because over the period, they have failed to provide direction as leaders. And Anna says that's why comments from General Asidun Getia, for example, that you're going to use the security to intimidate the people. Uh, that's why you have perhaps... I'm not saying guessing, that's why. He says perhaps, I'm using your words, perhaps we have less security at no, the places. No, no, I heard you. No, allow that's not to, what I said. Allow so, me to put my no, question. But you you know, allowed so, him so, so, to go so, ahead and say that he didn't say things. So, so, I'm right here. If I, want, if, I, if, I, if I have to correct a statement... Okay. Well, I don't mean, I told you what I said time, but is I that if that. we are to make a deployment mm. right now, mm. they are going to go on the streets and say, we told you. Is that not the same thing I'm saying? No, now? that's not. What okay. he said is that I, I am saying that the current state of the security is as a result of what they said. That's not what I'm saying. Thank you. Okay. So, Johnny, I'm saying that, yes, we went on demonstrations and uh, expressed ourselves against the compilation of a new register. Mm -hmm. But you see, sometimes our friends in the MPP would like to suggest that the NDC uh, is either timid or afraid. But mm -hmm. I will say to them that this country and this fourth republic has survived this long because the NDC has always been uh, democratic. No matter our opposition, even in 2012, mm -hmm. to the compilation of a new register, when civil society and the MPP wanted a new register, mm -hmm. we compiled, we, 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 we assisted the electoral commission mm -hmm. to compile mm -hmm. a, a new register for that election, which we won. And so if you see us again today opposed to a new register, even went to the court, and the court ruled against us, and we are obeying the, 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 the direction of the court, even as we, we disagree mm -hmm. with that direction, it does not mean that we are timid. It only means that indeed we are democratic will and they, we love will the this NDC, part of Would the NDC now, speak when you have excess security or if you like adequate security at the registration centers to ensure that everybody is obeying the protocols? And that says you will be the first to go out to go and say that we told you they will come and intimidate you with security. Nobody will, nobody will kick against reasonable security, not excess security. What is reasonable security? Yes, reasonable security is... Of, I mean, yes, we've always had security men at our borders in Volta region. Mm -hmm. The Voltarians have never complained. So when it becomes unreasonable, you should expect that they will... In uh, COVID-19. Com, 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 complain. But John, let's say, in COVID-19. We, we, we must also speak to the issues that are happening at the voter registration Quick, centers. Quickly. I have been uh, in my constituency since... Um, Two days ago, when the exercise started, mm -hmm. Johnny, and it is it is it is terribly disappointing. The kind of things were told. Mm -hmm. Madame Jean Mensa, the night before the elections, addressed the nation. Mm -hmm. The president followed. Were told the arrangements that are in place, the logistics that they have provided, the protocols that will be observed, Johnny. At almost all the centres that I went, mm -hmm. from the Kalpuhani Yapala Mox 
to uh, the Chabu demonstration to Kamvli. Not, nothing is provided for. No for oh, come on. I am just I just arrived last night. No, but I'm just saying if nothing you have is provided. Look, in some of the schools, mm -hmm. I remember Madam Jin Mensa saying that even at schools where the, their centers are, they will not use their school furniture. No they problem. will provide their officers with furniture done. and but do you have nothing. Of this? Nothing is provided. Which which, which registration center is uh, beyond I mean all look, Kamvli, Kamvli is registering at a center, mm. at a, 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 a school, the Kamvli RC. They, we have to provide them with furniture. But you have evidence. You go, that. you go to look. I have a even. I'm just asking. Look, yes, I, so I don't have Sagani me. TV, which is a and local television station. They follow you, you around, and they follow. Did you say just local electricity? I should share it with you and show to the viewers. No, I'm not saying you should be ridiculous. Yes, you are. You are ridiculous. You are interested. So I'm saying that, and look, even go go around town, Accra. I'm sure you will find schools where they haven't provided them with. All the things Veronica that they said we were going to provide them. Okay, check. The Veronica buckets, in some cases, that I mean, two are two places that I saw were under the table that the EC officials were working on. Uh, at at the table, under the table. table. So you talk to the, the people there. there. But you see, and, and when I talk to them, when I talk to them, when I talk to them, they said they were only giving the bucket. They were not giving soap. Mm. They were not giving tissue, and so they do not even know how to put it to use. So I'm telling you that, and, and that's just aside. Okay. Look, even the ID card, Jenny. Yeah, wait, go. Jenny, the ID card. Yeah. The, what were we told what about it? about the additional features? Mm. No, really, tell me, Johnny. Anyone who has don't, gone don't through this me. exercise should tell me Sweeney, how this, this one is different from the existing ID card that we have. Don't do this. Wouldn't we still have dead people on it? What is the guarantee that foreigners okay. will not still be on it? It is really to get to me. What is this? <laughs> Why do you put us through this? <laughs> Al -Haji, Al -Haji. That's what I'm saying. People who really are proud of this, must punish those who are the day, of the day. It is the NBC that will be punished. Good people of Kamali North constituency. People must rise up and acquire the ID card. The NBC will punish those who are the Exactly what they have done. Your microphones are off. Now, if you're upon Damwa, it speaks for the energy ministry. Now, Claudia Dodo sends this one. She says, Good morning, Johnny. Please, can't EC just give people numbers in order in which they came based on their calculations on the number of people they can attend to in a day? It does not make sense for a lot of people to go and queue when EC knows they can't attend to all of them uh, at once. If they can attend to 100 people a day, they should just allow only 100 people on the premises and let the rest go back home. This will ensure the social distancing and gradually reduce the number of people at the center. And it's also important to stress that within a constituency, there are different polling stations and there are different clusters. So if it is not yet the turn of your cluster, don't go out there and go and mass up there. It doesn't add up. Protect yourself. Your discipline will save you at this point.